What's up everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Bayonetta. In the last episode we started chapter 12 and I told you about some of the off-screen grinding I did so you can get to see some cool bonus content. Man, my throat's really sore for some reason. Anyway, now that we've gotten a couple chests out of the way, we can move on to the rest of the level and actually no, because once we get out here onto the... L it's not really a wing. It's more like a some weird random ledge. We're gonna have we're gonna get to another Alfine gate. So we just have to kill some minor little angels here. I still haven't remember what their names are. Just call them tinies. Our precious little tinies. Wasting their lives out here like this. So this is the one that I've never done, but okay. Let's uh, let's just cut directly to the second attempt at this. So I was saying before I've never done this Alfheim gate before. The trick here is that the there are propeller blades and uh, getting flashbacks to Banjo Kazooie. Think about the engine room. So the deal here is that. They place enemies here very deliberately. It's so you can dodge their attacks and activate Witch Time and then pass through the propeller blades that have now slowed down so you can get to the Alfheim Gate. I fluked my way through the first Alfheim Gate, or not through the first Alfheim Gate, through the first set of propeller blades, and I got myself stuck between two of them. And I also had two or three red hotshots equipped, so I just had to run headfirst into the fairly low damage propeller blades over and over again to kill myself to reset that situation, and it was long and unpleasant. Now, is this all this Alpine Gate is? Is battling a golem? Rather an anti-climax after what I've just survived. I might have to take a break from recording after this. I want to finish this all tonight, but my throat's kind of killing me. I hope I'm not getting sick. Ah, come on, golem. You ain't got shit on me. Man, I've, I've really been underestimating Fire Durga, especially for the Alphimes. Because there was the last one we did, the out-of-body one, where it really came in handy, and... Now this one, I'm starting to see how valuable Durga really is. That three-hit uh, charge modifier attack is really, really strong. It says nothing to the fact that I've taken so much damage on this, though. So, uh, I'm used to it now. I shouldn't die here. Okay, this should be the last one. No, I wasn't close enough. Bing, bang, boom. Man, that Alphine Gate was not worth the time it took to get here. Aside from the fact that I really just want to be a nagging completionist here. Anyway. That'll enable us to progress with the rest of the level. I don't think there are any more chests or Alfheim gates. And in fact, I think... Oh right, no, there's the stuff after Sean. So we have a little bit of the level left to go. It shouldn't take us too much longer to do that. And then, depending on how long it takes to finish this out, might just go ahead and do the and include the boss chapter in this episode because there is a boss fight coming up right after this. Oh, and we have to get back out. Come on, where are all the angels? They're taking their sweet time getting to me. And 
not even gonna bother fighting these guys. Come on! Someone throw something at me. Thank you! Now we can get on with the rest of this. Oh damn it, there's still another propeller blade! I kind of just want to insert a clip of Mike screaming in, in success when he beat the uh, when he beat the last part of Rusty Bucket Bay in Banjo Kazooie after he beat the the engine room. Something troubling you? Only your constant fretting over my state of affairs. I've no time to play games with you. No need to take out your stress on me, Bayonetta. It's clear. You're worried for the girl. she is now my aren't we attached to our precious little one do you like it when she calls you mummy you're absolutely delusional if I leave her he'll never shut up about it and his whining is twice as irritating as anything the child could muster <laughs> you've quite the tongue when it comes to curling round the truth and what about you what are you hiding? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think these might mean something to you. <gasps> I've no need for worthless junk. I am well aware of my task, but you have forgotten that I do not need your help. <laughs> with hatred. Accept your violent fate. Accept it and earn the left eye. Prove you deserve it. <laughs> And of course, Jean gives us, Jean and Bayonetta, I should say, give us a wonderful little bit of choreography. I especially like the, uh, the psychic bullet curves and the uh, Bayonetta materializing the spear out of, I guess, the freezing moisture in the air. Also, the guy we saw Jean attack was our the next boss we're going to be fighting, Sepientia. Wait a minute. Okay, I just had to think for a second, make sure make sure I have that correct. Yep. 
Oh, and there's a little bit of a continuity thing that goes along with him that I forgot to mention. So, you remember back, I think it was in the opening cutscene for this chapter, or the ending cutscene for the chapter before this one, there is an explosion that happens in the distance, and nothing ever really becomes of that. Well, that explosion occurs, it's supposed to be Sapientia that causes it, but they never really, they forgot to show that, and by the time they realized they had forgotten to show Sapientia causing the explosion, they ran out of memory to add any... They they couldn't add any new data. So it's just the way it is. Also, this whole thing, this whole level here, was supposed to be a luxury cruise ship. Which is the reason you have what appears to be a mast on this giant cargo plane. The whole thing was designed to be a luxury cruise ship. Now we have Jean's bike back, which... What did I- oh man, I forgot what the name was. I think it was like Angel Slayer or something. Either way, it's no match for us. Oh jeez, I think I- I reacted too slow. Oh no, I was good. Cause there's a- there's a triangle prompt and there's a circle prompt and I, I sometimes forget which one corresponds to which motion. I think the- Punches are... Oh, no, I'm just... A, I'm an idiot. It cor The buttons correspond to what you would normally do to punch or kick. So if you see uh, Bayonetta and John getting ready to start punching each other with, the, with the, their wicked weaves, you start hitting mashing punch. And if in this case, if they're kicking at one another, you mash circle for the kick. Oh, come on, John, just let me finish you. This should do it. Oh, there was two of them. There we go. I always forget that this chapter doesn't end with a Jean fight like you would expect it to. It keeps going for a little bit. There's a little section coming up with Cereza. And we'll just enjoy this sweet little rave party here. There's a notebook over here. Oh, so I lied before when I said there weren't, weren't any more collectibles. I don't think there are any more chests or Alfheim gates, I'm pretty sure. So this notebook is about the treasured eyes of the world that belong to both clans. The Lumen Sages possess the right eye of the world, and the Witches possess the left eye. And it explains that the reason that... It was taboo for the two clans to intermingle was because with each eye in the possession of one clan, if the two clans were to come together, the balance of power there might be lost. They served as overseers of, of time and history, protectors of the passage of time. Now, the later two power paragraphs are where you see the really meaty stuff here. Antonio notes that there was a gemstone that came onto the black market that was being labeled as the eyes of the world. And that's what we hear about from Enzo in the very beginning of the game. That's what starts this whole chase off. And he says that it might be a different item under the same name. And then he goes on to also say that no one even knows if there's... Uh, Nobody even knows if this, they, if these eyes of the world were actually gems. 
However, Antonio is convinced that the CEO of the Ith of the Ithabal Group, who we have uh, significant evidence now to assume that he is the Lumen Sage himself, is after the eye the eyes of the world. So we're starting to put everything in the story together. So now the plane is tilting and turning and spinning kind of out of control. And we're also filling up with electrified water, so we have to keep uh, a steady pace throughout this part. Eventually, the floor we're fighting on here will be covered in water. So we want to make sure we finish off these guys and they get to the slightly higher ground up this ramp. And of course, just as, as was the case earlier, Cereza's bubble can take damage and it won't affect your rating, your, uh, your damage taken rating for the level. Hello, Mr. French Horn. Hello, Mr. French Horn. Now we just keep picking her up and putting her down to fight off the waves of enemies. And I think we do this one more time. Luckily, French Horn makes this uh, pretty easy. Oh, maybe I was wrong. Maybe, it, maybe it's just this one time. Or I mean, maybe it's done now. Yeah, it looks like it. I believe the water here slowly starts to catch up to you, so if you place her higher up, it's, it makes things a lot easier. There you can see I was trying to use the Infernal Communicator accessory to summon uh, little demons. There's a story that goes along with them, but I need to actually look a little bit into it. Because I'm not... The details for me on, on the little demon thing are a little shaky. Or I mean King Zero and the Little Devils. So I'll probably talk about that in the next episode when I have time to uh, catch my breaths and <laughs> yeah, my breaths. Uh, catch my breath and collect my thoughts. In the meantime, though, we get to kill some stingrays. It's my second favorite hobby. It's right up there with gorilla knifing. Or wait, what was the other uh, thing from the Sexton Hill comic? Uh, Primate Violence. Now I think we're getting to the end of the chapter. And that should be right here, I think. Yeah, okay. Finally got that one right. Uh, that could be an episode on its own, but the boss is not super long, and I think I've already done a couple short episodes in a row, so, you know what, let's just go ahead and, and incorporate the boss, and instead of wasting time on the angel attack and all that shit, I'm just gonna cut straight to the boss. I'll be right back. Mommy! Mommy! I am Maggie, the little 
Another talkative type. I don't think I've got time to entertain your blather. I'd much rather hear it straight from your boss. Ha ha! Who see? Can I ask when you can pull on? The old. For the Thangra. The Andan calls me pull on Rakhmir. Pull on a. Pull on a queen. Pull on long chee. Hey, come on, Tom, kill her. Hold on, long sleeve, front on, or it does not go fast. The witch hunts. Rest, I think. He summoned a bad deal car to play Iodon Totem. Two parts of Fossi, who are on the Aldi, Galda, who are on the Caosco. How the hell are you? Oh, this is such a cool fight! So he said something pretty important. I believe it's just a reiteration of something we already know. In case it's not, though, this is just confirming that the Lumen Sage is responsible for starting the witch hunts and that he was also in league with the angels to resurrect the creator Jubileus 500 years ago. Which, coincidentally, is the time that Bayonetta fell into her sleep at the bottom of that lake and that appears to be the reason why she survived the witch hunts awfully coincidental though I must say that 500 years later when Bayonetta only when Bayonetta is awakened how are they starting to try to resurrect the creator Jubileus but I'm sure we'll find out more about that in due time for now though this is Sepientia or Sepientia which sounds a lot like sapience, which I believe means wisdom or knowledge, but in reality, he is, he or she is the cardinal virtue of prudence. Oh, and a cool thing about, a cool bit of trivia about this boss. And hold on, I actually, I have this written down on an index card that I have to find real quick. Okay, so, the cool thing about this boss is, if you notice, there's text above the, uh, like on the, the armored parts, on the legs and above the head. Some of the text reads System E, which is, uh the arcade version of Sega's uh, Master System. And I believe on the... Is it the legs or the head that this is written? Okay, it's on the head. There's text that reads SG-1 million, which is the theoretical follow-up to Sega's SG-1000 system. And this information I got from a blog post, again, on the Platinum Forums by... Let's see, what was his name? Kenichiro, uh, Kenichiro Yoshimura, who does who did a lot of the modeling for Bayonetta. And who's also responsible for Sa uh, Sapientia's distinct mech look. Also, I can't help but think that the head there reminds me of... Um, it resembles the lipstick monster? from Power Rangers a little bit. I feel like I just tainted how cool this fight is by comparing it to a Power Rangers monster. The face, though, really does remind me of that monster. I, I, I'm i gonna put a clip up of it. Or like a little still image.
Fire Durga is serving me well here. And now you just, when he does this, you just want to lead him a little bit. So you want to start going in one direction and then do an immediate U-turn. And so he'll pop up right in the opposite direction that you're going if you do that. I'm sorry I'm not talking much much, but this is one of my favorite boss fights. It's just so cool. So he does two of these where he pops up. I think I just barely dodged that one. Does two of these, and then he does this attack, the jaws dun-dun-dun-dun. I think he gives you a little hint as to which direction, left or right, he's gonna lunge. And I believe it's like, it's a little wiggle that he does. I don't know how best to describe that move. But it gives you a direction where to, where he's going to go, and then you can just turn the opposite direction. And you're steering him here with your the next Infernal Demon. Wait, is it? No, you're steering him with Madam Butterfly. In the distance there is the very patient, uh, fan what's his name? Fantas Phantasmarania? So now this fight goes from already being pretty cool to even more badass. Now we're fighting him in a Maelstrom. Actually, I don't think Maelstrom is a synonym for Vortex. I think like a Maelstrom is just a really bad storm. Either way, we are fighting him in a Vortex at this point. This is just so badass. Oh, speaking of badass. If you have not tried the new DMC Devil May Cry game, please give it a chance. Don't let all the hate that it's been getting uh, affect your opinion of it that much. If you're concerned about the redesign thing, Know that Dante does grow as a character by the end of it, and they reflect his growth in that... He, one of the ways they, they symbolize his growth is that he goes from having the new Dante... Fucking emo Dante black hair to... It's white by the end, and they use that to reflect the way he's grown by the end of the game. And beside from that, it's really fun, and the environments are gorgeous. I really love it. And you may not love it, but I'm just saying, give it a chance. And this is, I would say, the, the coolest boss finisher out of all of them. It's also crazy elaborate. Oh, the mini Phantasmarini... Phantasmarini... I have no idea why you would want this stone. It would look absolutely terrible on you. Much too flashy. <laughs> Welcome 
Welcome aboard, Cheshire. Oh, fucking hell! Mummy! I told you I'd be right back. <laughs> Shouldn't you be, you know, flying this thing? I'm a bit occupied at the moment. Well, so much for the subtle approach. We might as well have speakers on this thing blaring Ride of the Fucking Valkyries. Come now, we're VIPs. You know, nothing says you've made it in life like a private helicopter. Then welcome aboard Air Luca, Flight 001. This is your captain, Luca, speaking. Fasten your safety belts, as this may be a bumpy flight. All right, that's going to do it for Chapter 12 and Chapter 13. Now we just have, let's see, 14, 15, 16, and the extra chapter along with some of the bon bonus content I'm going to be showing off. So we are moving along, and Bayonetta is getting pretty close to over. The next chapter is quite short. There's a long one after that, and then the 16th chapter is a boss fight, and the extra, the prologue chapter is also a boss fight. Or the epilogue, I mean. Also, if you were a fan of the ending of Just Cause 2, you are really gonna like the next episode. Or if you- also, if you're a fan of, uh, shmups. Okay, that was a decent angel attack. So, that's gonna do it for this episode, folks. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.